All right, I just finished the video of a trip we did into the Grand Canyon this past March with my good buddy John Amorosano. The trip did not go the way we had planned. Um, right out of the bat, weather had closed down South Bass Trailhead where we were going to start and then also drop a resupply. This was going to be a 10 day, 10 night, 11 day trip. And uh, as you'll see in the video, uh, we had to make uh, several changes along the way uh, due to a variety of factors. The main one was we, our ultimate goal was to get up over the Flint Tuna Saddle over on the north side. Um, we were going, we we're going to go down uh, this trip, ended up us going down uh, Boucher Canyon through the gems, and then we floated across the, uh, the Colorado in our pack rafts over to the north side went up Shinumu Creek, Flint Creek, and attempted to go up over Flint Tuna Saddle. Uh, that did not happen. And then we had to figure out how to backtrack and, and get out given the limited, given the amount of food that we had. So the trip didn't go the way we had planned, but uh, frankly, it was an amazing adventure. Uh, I refer to it as a, as a uh, uh, suffer fest because of the challenges we faced along the way. Uh, the main one was the rain. It was pretty consistent. We Fortunately, we did have a few sunny days, but we were wet, cold, and uh, those conditions really uh, provided us with some amazing views of the Grand Canyon. And uh, even though it was challenging, it still was an amazing trip, uh, amazing scenery, amazing camaraderie. Uh, love hiking with John. Uh, just a great trip. I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, later this season in the fall, we're planning a Kings Canyon High Basin uh, trip uh, that I'm looking forward to, and hopefully uh, we'll do a nice video of that one too. So enjoy this video, and we'll see you down the trail. So we got to the Grand Canyon Sunday night. Uh, apparently it's been raining quite a bit, warm wet rain, and it's melted most of the snow. Um, so. That's probably not going to be an issue. However, the melted snow is going to make the trail probably pretty muddy. Uh, it's about 42 degrees up on the south rim right now. And that's a little bit of the sunset we're catching. We're glad that the uh, Hermit's Trailhead parking lot is open and our gate pass got us in. So we don't have to worry about that. And officially this thing, this trip kicks off tomorrow morning. You. Well, buddy, we've been on trail for 10, 15 minutes. What do you think so far? Unbelievable. Already can't keep the camera away. <laughs> right, look at that behind Jesus. us. Look Are you at, kidding? Look at the grins on his face, man. <laughs> <laughs> Love being here. Yeah, Woo! Baby. So we're going to continue descending down here, down to this saddle. And then we'll work our way over to that band and then follow it all the way around the point. Look at this path. Man, the guys who built this, guys and gals that built this, did a phenomenal job. This is a, a nice trail, awfully glad it's not iced over. It's made for a pretty easy descent so far. No complaining at all.
We started up top and we worked our way down that, that cliff across the way. Worked our way in this back bowl. So the pucker factor has just increased for me. Way over there is the Tuna Flint Saddle that we're gonna wake, make our way over to after the river float. We'll end up on the other side of that and then we'll come down it. And then we're gonna weave in and out of this stuff over here around this point and then out this canyon here. Oh my, it just got real. Somehow, we have to make our way down there. And we're gonna end up over there. This is the technical part of the Boucher Trail. Pucker factor of one out of ten. I'd give it a good five and a half to six. <laughs> I was gonna give it higher. <laughs> that means you're feeling better on this kind of stuff. <laughs> so here we are, the last descent into our campsite at Boucher. But as you can see. It's gonna be another steep one. My knees feel it already. Hi, yi, 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 yi. So that is the chute that we came down. I mean, it's just, just right on the hardest part, man. And we're still not done. Hi, yi, yi. How you doing, buddy? I'm dragging, man. <laughs> So we have just been handed our asses. Today was a bitch, and it's only day one. But those descents, man, and knees, oh, it's just, uh, yeah. The weather altered our plans. We had another route scheduled, but this was the only permit we could get was coming down here. So we took it. It's beautiful, but oh, we're tired. We still got to get down there for water and a camp. Oh. It is 4.30 and we've got about another thousand feet to go. And we actually are going down into that shadow down there. That's where we're camping. Long day, hard first day, but wow, is it beautiful. Good morning, day two. This was our first campsite at Boucher Creek. It's about 6.30 in the morning. It was a rough night. We both are very sore. It was hard to sleep. Fortunately, the weather was magnificent. Had to have been 55 or so. Beautiful little campsite. 
popped on a leave. Feel a little bit better this morning. Fortunately, we've got a, a relatively easy day as far as uh, elevation gain or loss. We uh, doing about 13 miles uh, along the uh, Tonto Shelf, so uh, it should be a good day. Yep, so we started down there, back of the canyon there, did the wash, and then worked our way up. And we've been climbing up this ridge here to get up to the shelf. It's a good way to start the morning. It gets the heart pumping. All right, popped up from the valley. On to the Tonto West, and it should be a, a nice, well, more defined, I don't know how nice of a trail, but more defined trail for the next uh, 12 miles or so. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. We are approaching Slate Canyon. Back in there, we're gonna get some water and take a snack break. And then we'll continue heading that way. So we're still making our way to the back of Slate. We haven't crossed over yet. We'll be on that side after our snack break. But we're working our way back there still. Whew. So this is Slate Canyon, that's where we had our little snack right there. Um, here's looking down, down the canyon. We'll be heading up that, up this side over here on our way out of the canyon. And this was our water supply. Nice little trickle. And that is Up Canyon. Where'd this humidity come from, John? The Pineapple Express, buddy. What's that mean? It's uh, just a big, giant train of moisture coming up out of the Pacific in mm. the southwest. So you're saying we might get wet? Oh, we're going to get wet. Mm. Nice. I'm already wet. <laughs> I'm sweat. Yeah.
climbed up to this little knoll here and just get a beautiful panorama. I mean, we're gonna be on that other side, coming down this chute right here and then kind of working our way across here. And here's the f interesting part is we're gonna try and go down that and then go up that to get on the ledge there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, pucker it up for sure. Well, all, all afternoon you felt the humidity, you saw the clouds, the wind started picking up and drain drops are starting to hit now. So it's gonna be uh, interesting, another three, three or four miles I think to get to camp. Hopefully it holds off till we get our tent set up. So this is Agate Canyon. We gotta get to the other side of that. All the way over to that red wall over there, the canyon that's going in to the left. So we rounded the bend from Agate and we're just coming into Sapphire Canyon. We're gonna work our way to the back side of Sapphire. Should be some water back there. And we'll camp for the night there. So this is what the trail looks like coming in and out of these canyons. You get to these washes and there's where they go over the edge and this is this is the trail when you find it. You know, we're spending a lot of time trying to find this trail. There are times when it's like this, you're like, okay, pretty easy. And then you'll be going, you're like, uh-oh, where'd the trail go? But every now and then you gotta stop and take in the beauty. So this is camp for the night, back of Sapphire Canyon. It's starting to rain. We're battening down the hatches. Sadly, I think we're gonna have to eat dinner in our trent, a tent. We're gonna get one last bit of water from that stream. That's what it looks like right now. Hopefully it doesn't get a whole lot fuller than that through the night. Yep, in our tents, listening to the rain. It's a wonderful pitter-patter right now. We're just hoping that we're not awakened in the middle of the night to thunder and lightning and wind howling. We shall see, but uh, day two is a long one. Sore, tired, good to be horizontal. Well, good morning. It is about 6.30 in the morning and the rain is still falling. It took a nice break around 2 till I don't know when and it was really quite pleasant out. It was warm. Fell back asleep and the pitter-patter of the rain woke me up and I thought, shit. So now we're about to get some breakfast going and try to figure out how to pack everything so that when hopefully it does stop we can tear down the tents and hit the trail so that's kind of the plan this morning just to show you my setup inside the tent i store everything in the vestibule keeps keeps things dry keeps me more room in, inside the tent so let's get some coffee going so now we're just kind of waiting it out. We're at a, we're at a stage where when there's an opening, uh, we should be able to tear it down relatively quickly and pack it up. I'll pack my tent and the ground cloth 
in my bucket that I have and attach it to the outside and hopefully throughout the day we'll find some uh, dry spot although I don't think so today it's it's this isn't a cloud burst this is a, a front that's just I think gonna rain on us all day so it's gonna be a challenge here's a view outside my tent at Johnny and up Canyon it's raining Just playing the waiting game. Hopefully the rain will lighten up so that we can pack it up real quick and get on the trail. It's gonna be a crazy day. It let up just enough for us to tear down our tents. And this is what we have to look forward to, more rain and clouds. Beautiful. A little bit different perspective on the Grand Canyon. Woo! Beautiful day in the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's beautiful. It's a blanket of green velvet. Look at this. Man, is that pretty. Unbelievable. Are, 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 we, are we hating today, John? No. You want me to walk more? You bet. We are having a difficult task making miles because of the beauty of this trail. So we've been making our way around to the next canyon. Drop down into this canyon a little bit. We're looking for an overhang to stop and take a nice little snack break. And we think we might be able to get a little overhang right there. We shall see. So this is the overhang that we found. A little snack in, dry out, take a nice little break. Hey John, what do you think about this morning? Man? You know, most people would think that this is miserable, but it's anything but. I mean, the colors are popping, the rain's bringing out the flowers, the greenness in the grasses, and it's just enjoyable. The, the low clouds in each of the gorges just makes those cliff bands just bite. I mean, it's awesome. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> this is our view while we're enjoying our snack.
It's another little finger canyon. We gotta work our way around. So way off in the distance there, Slate Canyon, that's where we're at, day two. So we're heading into the back of Jade Canyon and we're making our way down, probably to cross right there. And then we'll get on that ledge right there and work our way up and out to that point right there. What do you think about this afternoon, buddy? It's a little wet. <laughs> yeah, it's, are your feet squishing? There's some squishing going on. <laughs> There's some squishing In going. multiple places. <laughs> yeah, but we're still having fun, aren't we? <laughs> we're having fun, though. <laughs> awesome. Making the best of it, brother. Yeah. It's looking down river. It's a beautiful chocolate milk color. Pretty cool striations on the opposing wall there. And that is up river. Making our way back into Ruby Canyon. This is the back of Ruby. We'll be working our way back there and then we get to climb over on that ledge take that all way back out to that point we may attempt to sleep out there tonight time will tell so here we are at the end of ruby it stopped raining so we're trying to filter some chocolate milk there Try and get it clear, see what happens. Took out my ground sheet, my fly, trying to get to dry. I brought some coffee filters to try and filter this chocolate milk, but I put a hole in the bottom of the, the coffee filter. And so we're just gonna give it a try with uh, the platypus. What a beautiful sun. Just too bad it's not hitting us directly. Here we go again, another night of rain, but uh, what a day. Rain last night, <clears throat> I woke up this morning, had to hang out in our tents, 
until there was a little bit of a lull. Packed everything up while we were getting drizzled down throughout the day. Light drizzle to rain. Amazing views. And then, as we're deciding where we're going to set up camp tonight, we needed water. And we're at the back of uh, Ru Ru Ruby Canyon. Is that right? Yeah, Ruby Canyon. And uh, it stopped raining for about 45 minutes, and we got some water. And then uh, we walked out to the point, and it rained on us up to the point where, like, oh, no, we got set up in the, the rain. Unfortunately, it stopped to allow us to set up our tents. The wind picked up to help dry things out. And now we're snug in our tents, and as you can hear, it's raining again. Here we are, day four, morning of day four. It rained pretty good last night until about midnight, I think. And then the wind picked up and tent's pretty dry right now and it's absolutely gorgeous outside. Take a look at that. This is our breakfast tent set up here. There's John's cute little butt right there. <laughs> so we are. You have to pay for that image. We are hoping to uh, have sunshine and wind and dry everything out today. That's our goal. I want to give a shout out to Aleve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it seems like every day, end of the day, man, I, I just creep into into camp and I'm hurting and I, I pop in a leave and do a little stretching and lo and behold the aches and the pains go away and I wake up in the morning going wow I think I can do another day so uh, definitely bring some a leave and let's hope uh, the body holds up for one more day nothing gets a backpacker more excited than after a couple days of rain and everything being wet to seeing some sun about to peek over the rim, some blue sky, and here we are panning back into Ruby Canyon where we got water late yesterday afternoon. Worked our way out to this point, and here's where we're, we're camping at the base of this beautiful red rock, rock wall. Just a perfect little campsite. We're drying out. Colors are popping. And as you can see, blue sky. So, gonna be a good day. Our first canyon of the day, quartz. It's a little one. Fortunately, we got a couple tiny ones today. Just make it around to that side there. So we're gonna tuck in here to another little canyon and curl out and then back in front of that red wall is serpentine and we'll work our way around the point there down to bass down to the river and we'll start our float there and work our way over to the other side
So we just saw those bighorn sheep scamper off and they went right down this cliff. They kind of know where to go to avoid trouble, don't they? That was freaking amazing. Awesome canyon. <laughs> What's the name of it again? This is Emerald. It's beautiful, man. Sure is. A lot of little cool features in here. It's kind of a minefield of cactus through here that we're walking. It's sure pretty, but you really got to pay attention to where you're stepping, that's for sure. Serpentine Canyon. That's what you see. You get a cairn, you're finding your way. There's another cairn. And you lead all the way down to the back of the wash, and then up and over to that side, and start to make your way out. see the ridge we slip on there. It's got a little bit of a kind of a cliff band going around it and then right below the slope of it. And then back beyond that is where Ruby Canyon is where we got our water but this way you can see we left camp, went through quartz, went through emerald, and then dropped all the way back into serpentine there with all the awesome cathedrals. Awesome morning so far man. <laughs> I'm ready for lunch, how about you? And we still got a float to do.
Bass Canyon. Pretty amazing geography right here. Look, look, look at these bands, how they curve and change direction. Camp. Yep. Easily. And that is how you do it. Dirty water. Soon to be clean water. <laughs> Wish I would have caught it, but he's back flushing the filter. And even though he just filtered water and it came out clear, it was chocolate milk coming out of the filter back flushing it. So important thing to do after you've had a, a muddy filter like we did yesterday. Final descent to the South Bass Rapids. How you feel about this, Johnny? I've done it four times, so from this point over to North Bass, so it's still intimidating though. Here's our Soup by Adventure Mac Cat. We're gonna try and go right out that way to the beach and then hit the calm stuff on the other side. Woo! That was a head rush, wasn't it, John? Dude, that was tough to get out of right there. Yes, it was, man. This calm stuff right here. Gives me a chance to get my heartbeat to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Woo. Right? My, my heart was pounding. So that is the beach right there that we are shooting for. And we're gonna camp up on the rocks above that. It's one of my favorite places. Uh-oh, got caught in an eddy going backwards. But this is what I've been looking at. This wall, pretty nice. And there's our beach. The reward from floating, floating across, getting to South Bass, we're perched up above the Colorado River. And that is our view. Good morning. Well, it was a really nice early evening yesterday. Stars were out. I uh, had a nice dinner, got a camp set up. Uh, really nice and then whoa shortly after we laid down it started to rain and it rained again all night long but it's starting to break up where'd the moon go there it is so it looks like it's gonna be hopefully a nice day we're gonna head up to uh, up Shinuma Creek Shinuma Creek on our way to the Flint Tuna Saddle. We may make it over, we may not. 
we're just gonna see how the day unfolds. I think we got a skirt around here to get to that saddle. And this is look down from where we came. The campsite was just below that knob. We got river rafts and we jumped in right below those rapids there. The grind has begun. That's what we just came up. Whew, heart's beating pretty good already. Today has been climbing day. And this, this is the first little saddle we had to get up and over to get back to Shinuma Creek. Wow, it's glorious back here. We got a cross up there somewhere. First water crossing coming up. We're gonna shimmy up this right side here and we'll get to about there and then cross to that little beach area right there. And I'm gonna attempt it wearing my Birkenstocks. It's gonna be interesting. Sure does. <laughs> Woo! That thing's moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cold. Oh, yeah. Every, every day is something new, man. I mean, 
coming up this creek this morning is like a whole nother hike than what we've been through in the last four days. It's just, with this creek flowing the way it is and the lushness of this canyon, it's hard to believe we're still in the Grand Canyon. It's just amazing. It's gonna be a great day. Just walking up the side of the stream, back and forth, back and forth. see how many times we can cross some more yeah slow going up on the cliff the shoreline there and then back on a sandbar and then climb back out again and then across the river and do the same thing over there repeat I believe that's called White Creek making its way into Shinuma but we're going to go off to the right, and if you can see way back there, there's a bend. We're going to go around that bend. Uh, so, we thought we'd have a, a day with no rain and sun all day. The morning was hot and beautiful. We take a break for lunch, and boom, right over the top of the, these cliffs, clouds. It looks like it's raining up top. We stopped here to have a little lunch. By side, this wonderful looking stream, chocolate milk. Right there. What do you think of the morning so far, bro? The morning? The morning. Hmm. It's like no other day we've had. Day five is like day one. There's no other day that's been like today. Totally different. Yeah, totally different. Well, we're gonna try and make it up this valley and uh, find a place to camp and set up before. The rain comes, hopefully we find a clear water tributary so we can do some laundry and kind of chill out late afternoon and rest up for a big push tomorrow. Yeah, we have chores to do. We have chores to do. All right, let's get it. Let's do it. More of that scampering we're doing, just up and down, just picking our way up as slow as could be up. Just won't stop, man. Here's another gorge that we're going through. I don't know how we're gonna get this one. There's more of that craziness. Just trying to find a way up high, down low, across the river. Hey. This is what we've been working hard all day to get to. The split with the Shinumu on the left side there, with the murky, dirty water in Flint. This canyon over here is what we're gonna go up and you can see the water looks clearer and hopefully we can find a campsite soon and stop these river crossings because I'm tired of hiking in these Birkenstocks. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So, we made it up Flint of Ways and we found somewhat of a flat area in sunshine, even though it's draining a little bit and we thought it'd be a nice place to set up camp. So we did, and now it's four o'clock. Looks like a little liquid sunshine, but with these cliffs right here, you really don't know what's gonna pop over that any second 
And if you look up canyon, you can't even see the north rim, it's tucked. Well, you can. Up above that, there's another rim with snow on it. So, it's nasty up there. What a day though, it's a great day. Hey buddy, as we look down canyon, what do we see a brewing in the distance? Dark, rainy storm. No, is it gonna rain on us again? <laughs> So we are like awfully excited to have our tents up. We washed some clothes. We got organized and we're ready to jump in our tents when it starts to rain. Wish us a peaceful night. Good morning. Today's a big day. Today is get up and over Flintuna Saddle. We think we got a route down. Um, John had had a conversation with a guy on a Facebook uh, group page for the Grand Canyon and he gave us a route that's a little easier than the other route that I think Steck designed. I think that's his name, Steck. Um, today's supposed to be uh, a nice day, 0% zero chance, zero chance of rain, which is good. However, uh, after that, the next several days are supposed to be rainy. So we're awfully glad we're going to get some nice weather to get up and over. Uh, it's a bit chilly this morning. I think it was like 36 degrees. Uh, but as you can see, beautiful morning. Sun's starting to come up. Let's get this show on the road. Ow! Oh. Oh. Nice little canyon, huh? Oh, yeah. So this has kind of been indicative of what our morning's been like. Just working our way up a, this canyon, narrow canyon, along this trickling stream. But yay, the sun is out. There's blue sky. It's gonna be a good day. more of what this trail is about right here. Just picking our way through. Just working our way up. Yeah.
So originally when John proposed this stuck route, we were looking at going up into this chute here and up that. As I look at it now, I go, oop, gulp. Glad we're not doing that. But it makes me a bit uh, puckered thinking about what we do have to do because we got to get out of this canyon and it's a doozy. These are the little obstacles that we come across that we gotta get up and over that aren't the easiest and they kinda drain you. So John's trying to figure out the first step is a precarious one and you want that pole to kinda hold you and you'll propel yourself up to that next step. So this canyon has got narrower and more difficult to get through. And then off in the distance, that little pinnacle up there, we don't know if we go to the right or left of it, but that's where the saddles is up there. This is no fun. Can you see the, the thorns on these guys? We're walking through that right here. This is not fun. No fun. Nice little bridge there, John. Good find. What do you think of this section of the trail, buddy? Oh, that's the shittiest part so far. Yeah, we thought Boucher, coming down Boucher was a pain. It was in the knees, but this is slow going, thorny. You're probably half mile an hour right now, where we're at. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you, sometimes you can't see what's underneath your feet. You slip and you fall. It's uh, hard going. We're side hill climbing, trying to get above all that thorny crap. We got fed up with it. That's the problem with side hill climbing right there. Couldn't do it without the poles, that's for sure. Just saved my ass. We're taking a little snack break on this avalanche, rocky avalanche area. At least a place to sit on the side of the hill. That's where we came from back down in there. Been going for a couple hours. We're tired. We're hoping that we get up a little higher, it would get a more more of a clearing, and that's when the technical, more technical climbing will kick in. This this stuff here is just blows. So just to give you a flavor for what this is turning into. So this is forward. Which pattern are you try and pick? Maybe we go through here. Gets us 40 yards, that little spine there, and then take another view and figure out the next 40 yards, or 20 yards, or 10 yards. That's what this, that's what makes this so grueling. Yeah. That's why we've slowed down to maybe a quarter mile an hour. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. 
We are still making our way and it's just been brutal. We are overly optimistic that we just got through the checkpoint, through the choke point, and here's a nice little stream that we can walk up and all that fucking spiny, thorny, fucking holly. Oh my God, just, it was freaking brutal. Ah. Oh. What do we do now? So we made it to the waterfall, the fucking fall edge, the death edge, whatever you want to call it. There's the top of it right there. And supposedly, we're supposed to somehow work this band. See up there? No. So we're still at it now. We're climbing up to the band where we think that ledge is at just to look at. And if, if it's doable, we're gonna do it, but if it's like footholds with all that exposure, we're saying no. But we're gonna give it a shot. And here's, I don't know if you can see the top of this band right here. And then, yeah, fuck. 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 So I'm up on the band and it's it's right there. And that section right there just got me all puckered up and I got a wife and three kids at home and John's got a wife and three kids at home, and I just don't want to risk it, man. I want to live to see them grow old. Um, so John and I are making the prudent and difficult decision to throw in the towel. It's hard. So, this is the hardest thing for a mountain climber, backpacker. You always know there's one or two really difficult spots that you got to get over and through. And we knew this was one of them. And the intel we got made it seem doable to our adventuresome souls. So, we gave it everything we got getting our asses up here. Gave it a good look assess the risk and to us it's just not worth it no so the hardest thing is to turn around but we'd rather live to hike another day and go home and see our wife and kids exactly <laughs> that's exactly. the main thing like um, just it's not worth it it yeah i want to get over the saddle bad that's been my goal for you know three or four years now but um it ain't worth dying for so to my wife, Katie, I love you. And you're a big reason why I'm turning around. I'm gonna come home and see you soon, baby. Oh, it's the only reason I'm turning around. It's for my wife, Sarah, buddy. Yeah. And because you told me to, because you said it was sketch. And I'm taking your word for it. Buddy. Dude, what a trip, though. Fuck, it ain't over. Now, now it's getting back <laughs> down. That's... Hey, and really, this ain't over because we have about another four day, four nights out here to get back to the trailhead the way we came, so. There's still a lot of adventure left. We still got a pack raft across the Colorado again from North Bass to South Bass. I, I'm not even looking that far ahead, man. I'm looking. It took us, I know what it took it takes. us three quarters of a day to get here. 
Yep. And it's gonna be a bitch getting out of here. So we're gonna find, we're gonna try to get all the bushwhacking part out of the way uh, this afternoon so that we don't, so that all we need to do is just wake up in Flint tomorrow, truck down to Shinumo Creek and just do the water crossings back and forth and maybe try to make camp at uh, North or South Bass tomorrow will be the next yeah, goal. Totally left it. Look how much it dropped already. Crazy. This is what I mean about we're not done yet. We're uh, still in focus mode. This is hard, hard mileage. What'd you find there, Johnny? My GoPro that snapped off. Look at that. Wow. Snapped it right off the pole. That's Man. how hard some of that bushwhacking was tugging back on us. That's hard plastic. We, we recognize he lost it when he uh, the tree nut pulled out his paddle. And that's when we were like, oh shit, I lost my GoPro. He's got some great clips on it, so that was a good find, so. <laughs> one plus of turning back. <laughs> exactly. Goodbye, Flint Tuna Saddle. May I never see you again. I'm so glad to be out of that. It's five o'clock. I'm spent. We've been hiking since, what, a little before eight. Ah, finally out of that shit. You have no idea how happy we are to be on this kind of open terrain to walk on versus fighting the acacia bushes, trees, holly, oh my God, everything. But still pretty. Good morning. It was a really nice night last night. The weather was warmer than the night before. A little bit of a breeze. We got to camp, right as the sun was setting, and uh, did some laundry, quick laundry, threw up our tent real quickly, had some dinner, and in bed. Good night's sleep. We're uh, looking to change things up a little bit and possibly go. There's a saddle just to the right of that. I'm thinking of bushwhacking up around the Docks Castle and then dropping into North Bass Beach and floating across today. Um, we've got some mileage ahead of us. Um, getting a little, we're worried about the last night running out of food a little bit, but uh, we should be okay. Uh, storms are moving in. We have what, 40% chance of rain today, 80% tonight, 100% tomorrow. So more wetness coming. See you down the trail. So here we, we are back at it, crisscrossing the Shinumu Creek. Water's not as brown, seems just a tad bit lower, but more of this today. This is our third crossing. I wonder how many we'll do today. We are back at the White Creek junction that connects with the Shinumu Creek and that's what we've been coming down Shinumu. If you can see the water the White Creek is a lot murkier chocolatey than the Shinumu. Shinumu was a lot less brown this morning than the other day. saddle that we're going to drop back down the South Bass in. And here is the end of Shinumu Creek for us. It's been a wonderful little canyon to wander in. Face the challenge, but glad to be leaving. All right, we're back on top of the saddle above South Bass. And 
as you can tell from the sky, it's looking a little ominous. All right, so we are up above South Bass Rapids and that beach over there is where we're gonna end up on this next float. And just to give you perspective, across the way over there, you see the debris collecting. We, we got in on that first float right there. And just look at how turbulent that water is. And Eddie kind of pulling you back. And we were afraid it's gonna pull us back into the rapids and before spitting us out. So it was a kind of a nerve wracking experience at first, but then you get your bearings, learn how the boat moves, how the paddle, paddle works, and then down river you go. So this is North Bass Beach where we're gonna be putting in on the far end of the beach and then floating down. There's no real good way to get in. No, there isn't. <laughs> it's not very graceful, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, about as graceful as you could probably get. Doing it again, yeah, <laughs> baby. <laughs> this is really an awesome part. One of the highlights of doing this whole trip. And I think we need to start growing, aren't we? Well, the rapids are coming up, so I better pay attention to what I'm doing. Well, we got packed up just in time, dried off our uh, pack rafts, folded them up, put them in uh, back in our backpack, dried off, got everything situated, only for the rain. It just started. Hopefully, it, hopefully it's short-lived. We are working our way up South Bass, you know, where there's a pothole with some water. Rain's moving in, so we're gonna call that camp once we get there. Well, we got to camp, just what we were hoping. There's a big pothole, and you can see the, see the slick rock. Follow it down, there's a big pothole back in there. And sure enough, right above it, some campsites. Campers are really smart. And as you can see, we got set up just in time. And here's where we made a really good call this morning. That's at, what's that called again? That's called Doc's Castle. Doc's Castle. We were going to come around that saddle. Thank God we didn't. We'd still be up there, I think. But what a beautiful night. Tents are up, we'll be warm. Life is good, baby. Yeah, so for those of you that have never been to the Grand Canyon and you worry about water, here's, I guess, a little advice. So here's the trail, and then you come across this slick rock, right? I mean, look at this. You got all this slick rock, and you're like, huh. Maybe there's a puddle of water somewhere. So you gotta wander off trail a little bit. 
and you go, oh, there's, there's some pot water right there. But you go down a little further, there's the mother load of pothole water caches. Woo, baby. Now that is why all those tent sites are where they're at. There's your lesson for the day. Johnny and I are just standing here admiring this beauty and the rain and whatnot. And we were thinking, if someone could build a hotel right here, <laughs> would you not want to stay there? <laughs> Look at that path. view. Hmm. <laughs> in, in case anyone wonders, what do you do when it's raining and it's like 515, you're in your tent? Well, half the, the fun is is listening to John talk about what am I going to do? And he just, he can't focus on <laughs> one freaking thing to do. But he's got the music playing. He's got some rush going and uh, we're rocking out. But, uh, you know, when you're in a tent, you try to do things like clean the body up again, uh, get your meals organized for the next couple of days, tend to the feet. Uh, I've got a blister. I've got had a couple uh, long nails that need to be trimmed. Uh, but it's just so nice to be laying down and doing basically nothing once those chores are out of the way. Because every day, for those of you that backpack, you know, every day you wake up and you got things to do. Make breakfast, tear down the tent, repack your pack, stretch, and then you hike. And then you might take a snack and then hike again. And then you take ah, maybe 45 minutes, hour lunch. And then you start hiking again. Afternoon break, about three after we snack with a little break, and then you try and get into camp 4.30 to 6, somewhere in that window. And then you gotta clean up the body, and then you gotta cook dinner. And then you kinda get organized, brush your teeth, and then you finally sit down, and you're like, geez, it's 8.30. Man, I feel like I've been going all day. That's a day in the life of a backpacker right there. Well, the rain's been pretty light. Uh, let's hope it uh, stays that way. morning it was a pretty good night last night to be honest it, it stopped raining sometime in the middle of the night i was able to get up around midnight to take a pee break it wasn't raining and now we both thought woke up around five and uh it's not raining right now yet it's pitch black outside we think the storms are coming so we got up we're gonna get coffee going water's almost boiling we're gonna hit the trail early and hopefully get uh all wrapped up before the rain comes so you gotta take advantage of these down moments see you down trail it's been a wonderful morning camp is all uh cleaned up mosquitoes are coming out but this is the morning we have right now. It's beautiful. It's been dry getting everything cleaned up. We are gonna crank out some miles today. Ow! Beautiful morning in the Grand Canyon. Woo! A little bit of snow up in the south rim. We're about to turn the corner to go to, what canyon we head to now? Serpentine, brother. Serpentine. Yeah. There you go. yeah. Look at this view.
it's turning out to be one of those days so far where around every bend it's just beauty yep. it's really hikers candy out here right now photographers candy photographers too. candy too the weather's perfect for hiking perfect for pic taking pictures the lighting Colorado's coming back into view just wonderful Making our way to the back of Serpentine. So we just came out of Serpentine and typically what happens is the back of the canyon, you can get some water and camp there. Sometimes people will load up and uh, dry camp, meaning they'll carry water out to a point like this with the campsite. You see multiple campsites everywhere. And what's nice about this is you get to look back in the canyon and then you get these more expansive views. So it's your choice. You want to camp in the back of the canyon or out on these points. And frankly, they're both cool. I like the view from a point, but back in the canyon is pretty sweet as well. Guess what time it is? Time for the rain, it's coming, look at that. Give me walking in this shit, man. What are you doing out here in the rain? Oh, you know, just enjoying life, hiking the Grand Canyon in the rain, let's go. You got a smile on your face, that's good, Johnny. Now we are getting hail down. And now the sun's coming out. <laughs> Thank you.
skyline is just changing by the minute. Whew, what a day. So we got in a little over 14 miles. We hit the double whammy today. No rain when we left and no rain that one, now that we're setting up. We're out on a point and this is our view. Just got lucky today. I'm tired. It's a big day in the, in the Grand Canyon doing that many miles. But uh, it's so worth it. Hey buddy, what's for dinner for us tonight? We got instant Idaho and mashed potatoes. And I'm breaking up some sriracha style black pepper bacon jerky. I put olive oil in it, ghee in it, and I'm also gonna do some dried tomatoes. Yum. And is it hard cooking with a view like that out there, buddy? No, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> Well, our luck ran out today. It started raining in the wee hours of the night and it just continuing. It's 6 a.m. We're gonna try and uh, get some breakfast going. And hopefully this will lighten up so we can tear down the tents and get ready to slog on. So the rainy saga continues. That's what it looks like outside right now. Ew, we're in a cloud of rain. So I'm trying to detach the inside of my tent from the fly. As you can see, I just have one more up top. Now my inner is pretty much ready to be folded up. And then we're just gonna wait for the it to lighten up a little bit and then just fold up the rain fly and be off. That's the plan. It's our first canyon of the day. Turquoise. And it is pretty well socked in.
still having fun, Johnny? Not really. No, I agree. This right. is how soggy the trail is. <laughs> no bueno. It's kind of red. Grand Canyon, no fun right now. No fun at all. Yeah, but the thing that keeps us going is that right there. Look at this. Look at all that. Only days like this can you get scenes like that. We are making our way to the back of Slate. That's the biggest canyon of the day, wouldn't you know? You're way back there, and then pop out on the other side. It's just a long, long canyon to get in and out of. Slate has got a lot of water in it. There's one waterfall. Come on, in, you see. All right, it took us an hour to get in and out of that Slate Canyon and we hauled ass. We got cold, um, we're miserable, it's totally wet. We gotta get over to that ridge right there and then go into Boucher Canyon there. That's where we're gonna camp. We're both soaking wet, cold, not quite shivering yet, but it's coming, gotta keep moving. Nice way to end. A day coming down this rock field, huh? Oh yeah, soaking wet, cold. It's probably low fifties. I'm thoroughly soaked. Thoroughly. Yep. Okay. Thoroughly suck factor ten. <laughs> so I'm finally in my tent. God, everything was wet. Um, finally got my wet shoes off airing out my feet see a little moisture in the bottom of my tent but uh i'm inside away from the elements so that's that's good i'm taking off one piece of clothing at a time wringing off the water into my bucket and uh yeah it's been a brutal day well it was a. Uh, a decent night as far as being in the tent and warm and cuddly, but it rained all night. So we weren't able to open up the vestibule doors to hopefully air out the stuff that I had hanging so that everything is still wet. Weather report this morning is that it's supposed to be tapering off right now. And then the rest of the day, no rain. So we're just kind of going to hang out in our tents for a little while to hopefully... Hopefully, you know, the rain will stop here real soon and we can uh, let things hang out and the breeze will dry it out. But here's a look at what I got going inside. Yeah, I got some uh, paracord that I strung up and tried to hang out some clothes and my shorts down there and up my kitchen and yeah. Try to stay as dry as possible, but man, it's hard to dry things out when uh, it's wet out and you can't get any breeze to help you. At any rate, uh, this is our last day. We're heading out, so we don't really give a shit how wet things might be in our packs. We just want to get out of here. <laughs> it's been quite, quite the adventure.
gotten the long, arduous grime. My camp was right there. Now we're working our way up. And we have to go all the way up to that rim and higher. And as you can see, there's snow, so we're gonna have to contend with some snow later, unless the sun comes and melts it. But that's where we're going now. Love to see blue sky. Coming out from Boucher Canyon, the first big climb. And now, we get to work our way tactical climb. That was just 1,700 feet. Nice. Over a mile now we have to go up this somehow to get on that upper ledge right there and follow it around. This is the part we're worried about the most because of all the rain and pretty steep and muddy so it's gonna be interesting Working our way to that band up there. And off in the distance, the north room getting hammered again. Wow. This is what we call the technical section, technical section of this trail. Once you know we get here, and it looks like it's a little bit of light hail, but it's doable, and I'm gonna get doing it. All right, that's the home stretch of the run that John's on right now. And yeah, it's lightly hailing on us. That is what we came up. Yep, yeah, we're in the sun. Yeah, it's snowing out. amazing. And look at all the snow being dumped over there. We have one stretch left, 1,500 feet straight up to the car. The last bit of hermit. I'm exhausted. I'm gonna take a little break right here, try and fuel up, rest the legs a little bit before making that. Man, the last four days or so have just been exhausting. That day we went up Flint Tuna Saddle, that was ten and a half hours of hiking and bushwhacking for what, six miles? That was just brutal. And then we had a 14 mile day in there. And then in order to get out today at a decent time, 
Um, we did 17 miles yesterday in the rain. And then today's been, it's a nine mile day, so mileage not that much, but I think John said something like 55, 6,000 feet of elevation gain. This has been a suffer fest of a trip. Oh man, from the beginning, dropping down this with 10 days worth of food, started it off. All right, I need to eat some food and get ready for the, the climb up. Part of why I call this a suffer fest, man, that's a lot of step ups. And this is just a small fraction of how many there are. So many. But great trail maintenance. These guys did a nice job building us a trail. Yeah, look at the, the stonework here. Just magnificent. There's that step up. Beautiful trail. Oh my, finally making it out. But what, what a grind of a climb out, bud. Love you, brother. I love you too, man. That was a freaking <laughs> Baconator, here I come. <laughs> that was a grand adventure, my friend. Grand adventure. <laughs> All right, it's time to clean up and get our butts out of here. <laughs>